throughout the book, you provide some different examples that demystify things we wouldn't have today had it not been for people who were sensitive in nature. And one of my favorite ones was a rock star who, on the surface, I would have never expected to be sensitive, and that's Bruce Springsteen. And I was hoping, because I love that uh, beginning of that chapter, if you could talk about it a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. So Bruce Springsteen, he has this image of this extremely tough guy, right? Maybe one of the most macho pop stars you could think of and just celebrated by, I think, a lot of men everywhere as just the guy to aspire to be. And he also is a deeply sensitive person. And he's very open about that, both in his biography, his autobiography, I should say, Born to Run, in his interviews, and just in general, he's open that he was a sensitive kid. He didn't fit in because of it. And it especially made it difficult to relate to his father. Bruce Springsteen grew up with a very working class family and they did not have a lot of money. His father was a working man and Springsteen describes him as being built like a bull, right? Huge guy, tough, strong. And frankly, Bruce Springsteen was a little bit of a disappointment to his father. He was a sensitive, shy, insecure, dreamy kid. He just didn't have that macho attitude. And his father really pushed him away because of it. There's a, a scene that, that Bruce Springsteen describes in his biography where his father decided to teach him how to box. And this was a big deal. Bruce was so excited, right? Because, okay, we're finally, I'm getting attention from him and we're doing something cool and manly that he'll approve of. And, and they did. He started practicing boxing a little bit. And his father hit him with a couple open-handed, just like probably more taps than anything. And Bruce was clear. It, it did not hurt me, right? It stung a little bit, which is normal. He didn't hurt me, nothing like that. But suddenly... It just was too much for this sensitive little boy. And he just crumpled to the floor crying. And his father walked out of the room in disgust. And that was what Bruce's experience of being sensitive as a boy was. And thankfully, he didn't try to hide it or make it go away or pretend he wasn't sensitive, which is what a lot of we sensitive people do. Instead, he found ways to embrace it, right? He didn't fit in with other boys. Girls accepted him until it was like high school. And he was like, well, who wants to date him really? Okay, yeah, no, no, thanks. He didn't fit in. But as a teenager, he started to lean into a different type of misfit, the image of the rebel outcast rock star. And he took up guitar and he was actually terrible. His family pooled together money. I think it was his mom or his grandma who did this and bought him a used guitar. And he just was terrible at it. So they sold it back to the music store because they needed the money. And it wasn't until a couple of years later that he got another guitar and found another teacher that was more his style and kept plunking away. But it wasn't just his guitar playing, right? It was the emotions and the lyrics. He would tell whole stories and create whole worlds, life stories of these people in his songs. And you can hear that in so many of those songs today. And he would go deep. And when he would play a show, he would look at the audience and figure out, oh, okay, this audience is more motorcycle guys and leather jackets. Oh, this audience is more this kind of person. And he would adjust the set and adjust the way he would present things to really connect with that type of person. And it works because that was his sensitive strengths being used to their fullest. So he knew he was a misfit. He leaned into it. He never gave up being sensitive, but he did cultivate the stage persona as a tribute to his father. That persona that Bruce Springsteen has on stage of this macho guy is partly inspired by his own dad and what his dad wanted to be. And when we talk about the boost effect and that importance of embracing your sensitivity and building a life around it, building an intentional life, which I know is your, your kind of guess project here, Springsteen did that and his father didn't. And Springsteen eventually, when he was much older, he realized something when he was back visiting his father, that of course his father didn't like all these things being soft and shy and sensitive and creative and dreamy, all those things that, that Bruce Springsteen wore on the outside, presented into the world, they repulsed his father. But he realized as he got to know him better as an adult, that it's because his father had those same things on the inside. And his father had a lot of things going on in his life. He had some mental health issues as well. It's not just the only factor, but it's quite possible based on what Springsteen says that his father's also a highly sensitive person. He just hid it and stuffed it down his whole life and put on this armor to make it go away. And his rocket ship never took off, but Springsteen activated the boost effect and his rocket ship did take off. It's one of the most beautiful stories to me because we don't think of Springsteen as a sensitive person and he's this perfect story of how you should embrace your sensitivity and why.